Imagine a mountain, any mountain. They're tall, towering and made of rock. You might think about them being permanent and constant features of our landscape, but in actual fact, they're only transient. The surface of our planet is constantly changing as the rocky plates that make up our crust collide and move apart. Mountains form in these collision zones, but over millions of years they can be eroded away again. But how do we go about working out the effective lifetime of a mountain range? How do we work out how long these processes are going on for? Well, to do this, we can employ a science called geochronology. Now, geochronology is the science of dating rocks and the minerals that they contain. I'm applying geochronology to rocks that I have collected from the Himalaya, such as this rock here. This is a metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rocks form when rocks are buried beneath the surface of the earth and subjected to intense pressures and temperatures. These changing conditions mean that new minerals can form and grow in the rocks. Now, these minerals, some of them can help us date when these events occur. They can date when they first grew. These minerals are very useful for geochronology. The special thing about them is that they contain radioactive elements such as uranium. Uranium decays to lead over time and we can use this decay to calculate when the mineral first grew. This works very much in the same way that sand in a sand we might measure sand in a sand timer. If I were to set this sand timer running, if we know the rate at which the sand is moving through the sand timer, we can actually calculate the, t the length of time which the sand is running through. If we were to stop the sand timer and measure how much sand is left in the top versus how much sand is left in the bottom, and we know how quickly it was moving through, it's a simple piece of maths to calculate the length of time. Now, this is very similar to geochronology in minerals. So the mineral forms and it incorporates uranium. This uranium starts to decay to lead. Now, a slight difference and complication is that actually uranium decays to lead in an exponential fashion, whereas the sand in the sand timer was actually linear and decays and falls through the sand timer at a constant rate. Now, that's not too much of a problem because we can calculate the, uh, the decay constant by knowing the half-life of uranium. So it is still a fairly simple piece of maths to calculate when that mineral formed. So we measure how much uranium there is, how much lead there is, and we can work out when the mineral grew. But how does that tell us about the lifetime of a life scale of a mountain range? Well, if we build a really big data set, we can actually date lots of rocks, lots of minerals, and they can tell us all about when those rocks were at different positions beneath the Earth's surface and tell us about how the mountain range was growing through time. In the case of the Himalaya, we know that the mountain range started forming around 50 million years ago, which is pretty incredible. Get more from the Open University. Check out the links on screen now.